Hi, welcome to Rest Assured Tutorials. In this module, we are going to talk about Rest Assured tools. Okay, so before beginning with the Rest Assured tools, we should know why we are actually using this. If you remember earlier, using the Postman, we were sending the request, we are receiving the response for the student app, right? But what we were doing there was manual. The whole process was manual. So what if I want to do it by automation or I want to automate the whole process? Okay, so first thing here is that why I want to automate it. Right. So suppose I want to run my test cases in batch or I want to generate extend report or if I want to do the reading from the XLX or from the database and vice versa are right there. So to do to do that whole I need rest assured tools. Right. There are more advantages of using the rest assured and the automation testing uh, than the manual testing. We are going to get to know about this uh, with the pass passage of time. Right. So without any further ado, let's start with the rest assured. So first of all, the first thing that we should uh, know about is the tools that we need. Right. And all the resources for the rest assured. So to get that, there's an official website uh, of the rest assured, which is rest assured dash IO, right? On this website, you're going to get the download links and all the available resources, the latest version of the rest assured, right? So if you open this website and you scroll down, you will see that there is an option, there is a section which has all the downloads available. These are all the jars that we need. In this initial module, we do not really need, you know, all of these files, but you know, with, uh, with the coming of modules, we need all of these. So what you can do is you can download all of these right now and save it at some location. I'm not going to show you, you know, uh, downloading this because I already have these downloaded on my system, right? Okay. Also another thing on this website, we do have is the Java docs for the rest short. It has all the information related to the methods, interface and different classes that are present within rest short. So we can take the reference out of these, right? Okay, now beginning with our first rest short program. So to do that, open your Eclipse. So here's mine. Oh, oops. Okay, so here's my Eclipse. So here's my Eclipse workspace. Okay, in, la in last modules, we have already talked about, you know, advantages of using a Maven project instead of a Java project, right? So, you know, Maven project, uh, within the Java project, what I ha we have to do is, like, we have to add all the dependent jars manually. The jars that we have need in our project, we have to add those manually. But within the Maven, all we have to do is add the dependencies and those jars get automatically added to our project. So the same thing I'm going to follow uh, with this Astroshop project and for the, for the coming of projects, we are going to do them in the Maven, right? To create a new Maven project, the same process, go to the file, go to new and select Maven project. Click on create a simple project. Next, right here, you will provide the group ID. In my case, uh, let this be wisdom trainings. And in the artifact ID, I'll say it rest short project. Right, you can give it any name according to your project. Right, so here's my Maven project ready. Within this Maven project, what I get is this pom.xml file, right? Through which I'm going to add all the dependencies that I need, right? So when you open this pom.xml, it's going to look like this. And here you have the different tabs. Within this, I'm interested in this tab called pom.xml. Right here, I'll add all the dependencies that I need. So I already made a text file of the required dependencies. Here are these. Again, I don't really need all of these right now, but I'm ju just adding the one that we are going to need in the future also, right? Okay, so if I, if I talk about these dependencies, so the first one right here, you see, this is for the rest short. What it's going to do, 
like my project is dependent on rest assured so it's going to add all the rest assured jars to my project within this section the maven dependency right now it doesn't have anything when i'll execute this all these dependencies all the jars will get added next is for the j unit we don't really need this because we are going to work with the test ng so i'll just remove it and again these are the jars you know in the coming of modules we need it uh, test ng uh, like we need it right now right all of these you know at some point we are going to use so i'm just adding it in advance so right after saving this you will see if i click on this effective form it will load all those dependencies when you'll do it first time within your workspace it's going to take a while right so just wait for it right so after you know the uh, after the loading of this effective form all the dependencies will be all the jars will be here through this dependencies right so see how it is it to work with the maven project so that's why we are following the maven project all right so now moving forward with creating our first program of rest assured so to do that what i'll do is i'll create a new package here and let's say I name it as t6 right within this package i'm going to create a class and let's say name of that class is get all students test right so here's my class now within this class i will create a test right so i'll put an annotation here which will say test and this will be from okay first of all let's create a method then we'll do the imports so i'll create a method here uh, let's say i'll name it as public public void get all students so here's my method now if i if you hover over it you see an option to import this test ng library right now the test ng is imported now we can create our test okay so the first thing while creating a request what we need is we need the urls uh, if you remember within the class of postmans what i saw you that always a project comes with this uh, a rest based project comes with the urls right on those urls you fire up your command uh, fire up your requests right so i have a file created already here which has the urls for the different requests like the get post put we are going to talk about all of these you know in depth but right now <clears throat> We'll just focus over, over over a simple get request URL for that is this, right? So I have to send my request. I have to fire my request on this URL. So how I'm going to do that programmatically within REST Assured? Okay. So to do that, the first thing that you will do is you have to create. You know, you have to put the yes uh, REST URLs within this program. So how I'm going to do it? I'll use a class. Of rest assured, which is rest assured, which has a string method called base URI. So what I put inside this base URI is the base URL that I have. So what's my base URL? Out of this link is this till the local host. So I'll put it there within quotes. So if I put it here, look like this. Next thing that I have within my URL is the port number. So how I'm going to add the port number? Again, using the rest assured, I'll say rest assured dot port, right? And I'll say the port number. In our case, it's eighty eighty, like this. Next thing that I have to add is the path. So within this URL, the path that I have is this. There can be so many tweaking that we can do with this part uh, that I'm going to talk about again in depth when we we'll, uh, reach to the get request. So right now our path is this. I'll put it there. So within the quotes, okay. First of all, rest a short dot base path, and within the quotes, I'll put this path. So here it is. So our URL is. ready the address on which we are going to fire up the command is ready right now 
before you know moving forward if you have noticed one thing if i hover over you know this class i'm not getting any information about it it's saying that the element neither has attached source nor attached a java doc right so we're not getting you know any info about the classes or the interface and the methods that we are using from the rest of short right so you know <clears throat> this is not a good practice i mean we should know about these right uh, if we talk about you know the basic java classes and interface that are present if we use this we get information about all of these right but we're not getting for the rest of short so to add the doc for these classes and the interface what i'll do is i'll i'm going to do the manual addition how is that going to be performed just right click on your project right and go to java build path within that this is the maven dependency where all the jars got added and let's say this is the first one rest is short right okay oh, one thing more the version that we added uh, is the 3.6.0 but the latest one is 0.07 so i'll change it from here right so if i change the version the the latest one will get loaded right now if i check the maven dependency i got the latest jar okay so coming back here so here is my jar so in order to add the doc file what you will do is just expand it click on the java doc location and click on edit now you have to click on java doc in archive and give the path of the java doc file so from where we are going to get this java doc file just remember initially i told you that you have to uh, download these jars right within this jar you are going to get the doc file so i'll show you so this is the folder where i have downloaded the jars here it is so if i click on rest short 3.0.7 go to docs i'll get all the doc files right so the first doc that i'm going to add is for the rest short 3.0.7 so i click over it say okay and press okay so now the doc file for this jar got added the more docs uh, for which i want to add the doc, uh, doc file is this java path right again the same process click on java doc location click on edit java doc in archive browse and this is the json path doc click on okay and add it so json path doc is ready more i want is the rest short common dot o dot 7 so again i click on that edit archive and this this is the doc file for the rest short commons so it will be added the last one that i'm going to add it is for the xml path so first i have to locate that jar it should be here here it is xml path so i click on the java doc location edit java doc in archive and this is the doc file right so i added all the basic doc files right for the, for the basic jars right so do not get confused by this process all i did is just added the doc information what the benefit i'm getting out of it is now you can see earlier when i was hovering over uh, this rest shot i wasn't getting any information about it the doc information but now if i hover over it you'll see i'm getting all the information about this package right what i can do with this package what what are the possible methods what they do everything right so this is this is why you know uh, we gone through that process all right it should be clear <clears throat> now moving forward we have our url or uh, on which we are going to post request is ready now we have to create the request that i am going to send on this url so how i am going to create that request there is a class within a uh, rest short called as the a request specification so i'm going to use that class i'll create an object for that class name of the class is request specification this is the class right if i hover over it i'll get an option to import it here it is io rest short dot specification create a check for it i'll name it as req and 
this given method will return as the object of this request specification class i'll come to this uh, given method first let's talk about this request specification class so what it does is it basically allows us to specify the how the request will look like so basically you know this class the major uh, the, the reason we use this class is you know to pass different things within the request just recall within the case of postman when we used to fire up requests right we used to send so many things with the request it could be he different headers it could be you know setting the content types and even using the filters in the rest of short so everything is done by this request specification class we are going to see an example for that don't worry okay now in order to use this given method what i have to do is i have to do a static import we have already talked about this static imports in the in the java modules so what i hear what i'll here do is i'll simply import the this method which is given right now there is no error so what this method do will do is basically you know it builds up a request and returns the request specification object right that this is what it's doing here okay so the every uh, request that we are going to you know build up within the rec uh, rest assured that is going to start with the given okay now let's see what i can do with this request object so like i told you using this request object i can set the content type of the request whether it's a, we are sending a json or you know an xml or could be anything right what we can do more we can set the headers right and th there are lots of things that we can do but right now we'll start with this right i'll show you that how it can be performed okay so in order to set this content type what i'll do is i simply use the check and the method it has so there are so many methods as present we are going to talk about this in over in the coming up modules so we are just talking about the basic request how it works okay so in order to content sent uh, content type let's say content it's going to show up content type and within the parameters pass the content type so which will be content type dot json like this right and it will be again stored to the this request class right so in order to you know make those changes uh, appear within the final request we have to hello hello kya yeah, nikhil ha uh, shamshir maine wo user se na bhi login kiya to main dekh raha hu ki usme bahut kuch khula hua hai browser mein rule book khuli hui hai ha ha us pe actually main kaam kar raha tha अभी क्या काम करते हैं आप काम कर लो बट एंड में क्या करेंगे उसमें हम नोटपैड में ना एक ही नोटपैड एक टैब होगा यूआरएल्स नाम का ठीक है और उसमें वो यूआरएल वगैरह पेस्ट कर देना ताकि जब केविन इससे लॉगिन करे वहां से यूआरएल वो यूजर ने पासवर्ड शेयर कर देना उसी मेल पे ठीक ठीक है ठीक टू पुट अगेन दिस इन द रिक्वेस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट राइट एज इट्स अ इम्यूटेबल क्लास ओके सो फॉर द सेटिंग हेडर्स अगेन आई विल से क्वेस्ट डॉट हेडर्स दिस अ मेथड कॉल्ड हेडर्स आई विल यूज द स्ट्रिंग हेडर्स राइट so right here you can set your headers you can pass the values in the key value form i'm just taking an example so let's say my headers are x and y like this right so within my request i send it set its content type i set the headers now it's really interesting now what this uh, there's a method suppose i i'm firing here a basic get request what it's going to do it will get the list of all the students out of the student app right 
so i'll fire up the get request so in order to do that i'll use the get method right so on this request i fired up this get method right so what this method is going to return us a get method is going to return us the object of response class so if it returns us the object of response class so i can put it there so if i import the response class and let's say a name it response import it yeah it's uh, really careful while importing uh, you know the packages in the classes always imported from the package io dot rest shot dot response right there are you know the response class present in some other packages also but we are interested in the rest shot one so always you know keep in mind this okay so here it is so now this get method is returning at a response and it's getting stored in this response object right okay so now if i print this response i should see that our response within the console right okay spelling mistake now it's fine right okay so we just created a basic request what that request do is it's it's a request Hello. that is getting sent to this url mm -hmm. it's a get request so it will retrieve some data it's for the student app so it's going to get us the list of all the students that are present within that application also while sending the request i am setting its content type and i'm setting this headers so if i fire up this uh, fire up this request i should get within the response list of all the students so in order to you know get the response first we have to start that app right so in my case my student app is on the desktop so i'll open the command prompt go to the desktop the directory where you have put that uh, student app and start it it's java char res dot char so i fire up this command my app will run so it's running okay it's ready so now let's try firing up this right so in the response we should get the list of all the students so here it is this is the list of all the students we can cross check it you know even if i fire up this command within our browser so it's local or student slash list we'll get the list of all the students right so the same thing we are getting here but you know it's coming in the single line and it's not really readable right so what we can do is you know to get this json that we are getting within the response in the right form there is a method present in the rest assured which is called as pretty print so on the response i can fire up that method response dot pretty print so when i'll fire up request and uh you know return the method using this pretty print it should be in a readable form so here it is right so our json is looking much more nicer now rather than this right so i'll just comment it out okay <clears throat> now you must be thinking that you know i set this headers and this content type so is there any way that i can see that how my request is actually looking like that i'm sending what i'm sending in that request right so we can do that how we can do that by logging it so within the rest assured we have a built in method to log our request right so how i can do the logging again i'll simply use this request object and use the method which is log right and there are you know different ways we can do the logging we can log whole body or we can log only the headers or the, we can log if there is a validation so i am going to talk about all of these you know in depth when we'll uh, you know cover the logging part but right now i'll just use log dot all what it's going to do it's going to log everything that will be you know fired up with the request right so <clears throat> now again if i send this request 
I will see every uh, my request getting locked. So everything that is going inside the request is now locked, right? We set this these header values, right? X and Y. So you can see we set these values X and Y within the headers. I can see that these headers are going. I set the content type at the JSON, right? So I'm getting that in the content type, right? So our whole request got locked. Okay, so these are, you know, some basic operations or some basic methods, you know, that you can perform with the request specification class. Now, in the same way, you know, this response class also has methods, right? Like from the response, you can do, uh, when you're receiving the response, you can perform different things. Like if I talk about it, we'll see. What if within response, you want to check that what kind, what, is the type of response that we are getting the response type response content type so how i can get the getting the content type in response what more we can do is we can check the headers that are present in the response there are some request headers, there are some response headers. Suppose the JSON that we are getting, the response that we are getting from the server, from the application, it has some add headers, right? So we can extract those headers. What more we can do is we can check the response time, the time took by server to respond to our request. Right? And we can also get the status code, right? So what the status code is basically, you know, when our, uh, when we'll get a valid response, so we'll get the status code 200. So if it's not 200, suppose it's 400 or something else. So we can see that we didn't got the right response. We can also check the status code. Okay, so starting with the getting the content type of the response. So how we are going to get it? Again, I'll use the response object. And, and I'll put it in the display statement so we can see it in the output. So I'll say, and using the object of this response class, response dot get, say content type. Like this is the method which returns the content type, right? in order to get the headers that came with the response. Oops, sorry. I'll again use the response dot. There's a method called get headers. Like this. Even if I again hover over it, you know, you get all the information about, you know, what it returns. It returns the content type, right? Or null if it's nothing it found. If I hover over it, <clears throat> it, is, uh, it, it returns as the headers that are came with the response. Same with the response time. So if you want to check the response time, how much time server took to respond, you can again use the response class method called get time. By default, you know, it's going to return time in milliseconds, right? Same thing we can do for the status code. Response dot get status code. Like this, right? So this is going to get us the response content type of the response. It's going to headers that are present within the response, the time took by the server in responding and the status code. So everything will be printed. So now let's try firing up the command once again. And let's see if we are getting this information or not. Okay, if I go in the starting. So here it is. Here it is. I'm getting every information that I have demanded. So I'm getting the content type, I'm getting the status code, uh, I'm getting the time took by the server, right? 
So everything that I ask for, we are getting in the response via these all of these methods. So again, these are the basic methods that are present in the response class, right? There are methods present in the request specification class. We have talked about it, right? So basically what we did right here within this uh, first restoration program is we send a basic request, basic get request on this URL, right? And our request has some headers. We set its content type. We logged our request, right? And we got a response. And out of that response, we extracted its content type. We got the headers that are present, time took by to come that response, and we got the status code, right? So this is our first, you know, basically the first uh, basic request and response within the rest short. All right. Okay, so if you look at this program, you know, it's not really uh, clean, neat. I mean, it's not really readable. So is there any way that we can make it much more cleaner? Right, so there is a way. I'll show you. So to do that, again, I'll cre create a new class. And I name is as get all students. Test, uh, let's say better. Mm -hmm. Right, so a better way of creating this. So again, in this request, what the first thing that I need is, I need all of these imports. So what I'll do is, I'll just change the name again. So right here, change the name, and just delete all of this part for once. Okay, so this is the URL is going to remain same on which we are going to send the request. Now. The first thing, the first method that is going to be called in every rest short request is this given method. So first thing that we have did is that we set the content type of the request. So what I'll do here is I'll set its content type. So I'll say given dot content small content type and within the parameter set the content type. JSON. Right. The next thing that we did within a request is we set the header values. Right. So again, I'll just copy it. Set the header values. Right. The next thing that we did is we log the request. Right. So I'll just copy this method and log the request. Next thing we did is we put the get method, right? So I'll add the get method. At the end, what it was returning this get method, a response. So what I can do here is I can create a response class object because this get method is going to return us that. So it will be equals to that. So I'll say it's equals to this, right? So <clears throat> you see here, this is the whole request that we have created here, right? In this neat and clean form. This is the way we are going to follow. I have shown you, you know, this way to make you understand about the different classes and the methods that we are using for our understanding and using this. But this is the right way of doing this, right? Okay, so now I can simply print this response. Again, I'll say pretty print. And within the console in the output, we'll get the same response that we are getting from this request. Let's see. So here it is. It's the same response that we are getting, right? But this code looks much more nice and clean, right? Also, you can add this, these methods also, right? For the response, for the response extraction, you can add all of these here, right? I'll just remove this. And the object reference that we are giving here is RSP. So I'll change it. So it's ready, right? So again, if I fire up this command, you'll get this information out of the response also so here it is right 
okay so in this way you can cre- create a much more cleaner program okay so now <clears throat> we created a basic get request right but there are you know more ways in which, in which we can create get request right so next i'm going to talk about all of this crud operations we are going to see that how we can actually post a request right how we can update a request put is basically updating and also more features of the crud operation like deleting the request so all of these now we are going to talk about this right here we just talk about the basic how basically a request is getting created a res- how a response has been generated within rest assured okay so beginning with the crud operations okay so basically you know we have four crud operations present so get another one is the post put and delete right so you know for the basics the request that i have fired up is the get request all of these are the request right so you already got a glimpse of how a get request looks like and what it does but again you know it's just beginning with this again so <clears throat> right here we are going to create a new package first for this crud operations examples so i'll name it as crud operations within this i'm going to create a new class and this is for the get request test so before beginning with this in a, in the last example what we did is we fired up this get request right what exactly a get request do is it fetches the information out of the server or in our case this is the student app it will fetch the information out of it right so this is how we built up the get request but you know what we did in this example this was one of the way how we fire up this get once uh, get request but there are multiple ways how i can say there are multiple ways to send a get request you can see from these urls i can get the list of all the students i can specifically get a student or i can get by the id i'll come back to this later but first of all let's create the an example for again for getting all the students so the first thing that we do here is i'll create a test create a new method and a name is as get student right now import the test ng to just hover over it and again first again for the requests will build up the url it's going to be remain same like this and here okay now again we'll create the request in the smart way right like i told you within within the last example right we are not going to follow this this process it's just for our understanding okay so create a response object and initialize your request with the given then what we have to do set the content type at, as it is the requirement of our application student application so content type and that will be json right and import the oops spelling mistake here import the response from the restshort.io 
do the static import of the given like we did earlier right nothing new with this dot given right okay next thing that i want to do is i want to log my request not mandatory but as we already know that what this method is going to do log everything that will go with the request and after that after that i'll fire up my get method and here we go request is built up right nothing new with this we, we did this already right okay so now i will print this response using the pretty print method we have the method called print but as you already know it doesn't uh, shows up the json the, re the response json in the right form right so we'll use the pretty print method so this is our test and i'll fire it up within the response what i'll get list of all the students right oops oh it's not working uh, because we didn't start the student app sorry so first let's start off the student app so it's on the desktop so i'll join the directory first and this is how we start the app the name of the app is rest.jar so it's starting and yeah now it started now if i try to fire this command up i should get the list of all the students and here it is right so this is how get request works the, in the last example we used this but now what i want to tell you is, is that that this is not the only way right this get request is not just limited to you know get everything that is present within the database of an application or uh, like in our case in the, the student app <clears throat> suppose like right now i'm getting the list of all the students suppose i want to fetch a student according to its id i want the information about a student which has the id number let's say 5 or let's say 65 or could be anything right can i do that so i can do that right it you know it depends on the nature of the application also you know how the data on the back end is uh, is been made like in the student app i can do that you know all i have to do is i have to change the get url earlier i was sending my request on this url right but now i'll send it on this way if i want to get it by the id of the student so what i have to do okay it's not right it should be student here okay now it's correct so i will send my request on this address right so what i'll do here is instead of the list i'll pass the id number of student suppose you want to get the student which has the id number 10 so now if i fire this you know uh, request up i should get the information about only one student within the response which has the id 10 so let's check so here it is right now in the response i'm not getting the list of all the students i'm just getting the information of the one student that i wanted right and how this change happened this time i fired my get request on some different url right okay now like i'm getting the list of students suppose i want to uh, within the response i want to get a student by its program right the kind of program it's opting suppose i want to get the list of all the students that are opted financial analysis as their program right out of all the students the students that opted the financial analysis i want the list of only those students so can i do that so yes i can do that this time what i have to do is i have to again make change in my url right i have i will use this url right okay so this is the url that i have to use i'll i'll talk about it you know what actually is happening in this url okay so so i have to make some change here again okay it should be student slash list okay so what i'm doing here is 
the uh, you, request I'm finding of the URL is out of the list. It's it's gonna find the student which are opted for the financial analysis, and at last. I am sending the limit. What this limit is actually doing here is like from the beginning, it's going to start finding the students that are opted for the financial analysis. So I can set the limit till uh, like how many students from the beginning it should display. If I change the limit to four from the beginning, the list of students within the output will be four. I'll, I'll uh, from the uh, from the response from in the console, this concept will be clear. So do not worry about it. Okay, so let's just see if it's going to work. <clears throat> okay, before starting with this, you know, also I, I'll tell you that uh, if I fire the same command up here, right, it should work. Showing you for a reason, you know, I'm showing you this uh, within the browser. If I, the same URL, if I fire this up here. Okay, so you see what I'm getting here. I'm only getting the list of two students. Right, and these are the students which are opted for the financial analysis, right? But there are more students within the list that are opted for the financial analysis. Why I'm just getting two because I set the limit to the two. If I set the limit to the four, then from the beginning I got the list of four students, right? Again, if I change this limit, or if, even if I remove this limit completely. Then what I'll get? I'll get the list of all the students out of the hundred students that are opted for the financial analysis. So limit is just to set the you know the number of the records that you want to display within your response, right? Okay. So now it's working here in the browser, right? So it's the same which should work within the Eclipse, right? But there is a catch here. First I'll fire this up, then I'll talk about it. Okay, so here you see within the response, you see, I fired my get request on this URL, but within the response, I'm getting the list of all the students, right? This is not the desired output. It's not what we want. So it's not working the right way, right? So what is the reason? The same URL, I'm firing up the request within my browser and it's displaying the result. Right, but right here it's not working. And for the other get request, it was working fine, but it's not working this way. A reason being, you know, we put some logic here, right? Within the path, we are putting in logic here. And that too, I'm passing in the URL only, right? This part, the base path, is just for setting the path, for just setting the URI and the port. Right? You can't put that logic here. So to, to get the desired output or do this in the right way, we have to put this, sorry, we have to put this within our get method. So now if I put this in the get method, I'll just remove it from here and put a slash here. Now let's see if we'll get the result fine. Okay, now it's working fine. Now I'll got my desired output. We are just getting the two students that are opted for the financial analysis because the limit is two. If I change it to four, it will be four. Same as the browser, right? Okay. So what just happened here is <coughs> when I put my logic, this logic here within the URI, it doesn't work that when the rest is short, right? So whenever you have some, some kind of logic here, Put it in the get method. Also, you know, the right way of doing this is this only, right? Like for the other URLs on which we are firing up this get request, right? That can also be, you know, uh, be done this way. Like here, like I set my base part to the student and I can still get the list of all students from this get method, right? If I just remove everything and put the list, this will also going to return me the list of all the students, right? Okay. And also, you know, this is the good practice, the right way of doing this, because, you know, these are the things, these, these are some things that are going to remain, you know, common for all the codes. Even if I send another request, which I'll talk about it later, right? It's going to remain same. So we are going to do something about it, right? So we do not have to write this code again and again. So <clears throat> this is the right way of doing this, right? Even for the student, if you want to get a particular student out of this app, like I want to get the 12th student, I can pass, pass this in the get method. 
right so it's pointing the 12th student right so in the get method you can pass the you can pass the end point you can pass the path the end path right so this is how your get request works right there are multiple ways within the student app to fire this get request you can get the list of all the student you can get a student by its id you can get a student you know uh, by its program that we have opted you can set the limit you can just get the student uh, by its program without setting the limit right so there is a multiple ways you can tweak it yourself and see you know right in the possible way the how you want uh, to fetch the records right so this is how the get request works now moving forward with the post request uh, right so the, what a post request do for us is that that when while firing up the request when we want to send some information right i want to send a json with my request right in that case i'll use the post request right okay so without further ado let's create a new example for the post request and let's see how it works so i'll create a new class name it as post request test right and here again i'll create a new test a test ng test create a new method here the same old drill i'll name it as the post request okay so i imported the test ng and this is the same urls there will be some change in it but i'm just copying the same code okay okay so the till here the part is fine now you fire this uh, the request on the student app so you know everything is fine here right okay now in order to create a post request like within my post request i want to send a json right so i have to create a json file right so what i'll do within this project i'll create a new file uh, let's say i name it as student dot json and within this file i'll put my json that i want to send with the request that i want to post so this is the json okay oops so it did not copy it okay here it is now if you look at this json we already see that there are number of students present in the student app right there are 100 number of students present in the student app right now why i'm using this post request in the in those list of student i want to add a new student right there are 100 student present with this id now i'm adding a new student that will obviously get the id 101 and to to do that i am using the post request because i am posting something to the server within the database right within the student app so i'll use the post request now in order to build up this post request you need a json so raise the json and in that json these are the uh, these are the required key and value pairs according to the json schema of this app i'll again in depth talk about the json schema what it is and uh, how it is built how we validate it in the in the later on module but right now we are just fo focusing on the post request so this is how your json looks like like this these are the ta uh, these are the key and value pair that should be present email an array of programs first name and the last name right so for that i have just created this file which has my required json now going back to the request again in order to build our request i'll create an object for the response class let's say name it as this import it initialize with the given set the content type as it is the requirement of our application right and content type dot json right and i want to log this also and you know in this case in, within the case of post it's really important to log it within the case of get it's not really important right but within the case of 
most important why it is important you know you want to you want to ensure that how your request looks like that you're sending to the server you can see that in the console that what request is actually going there right so it's really important here also we have to do a static import of given like earlier we did so here i'll say static io just a short dot given okay now the error is removed and after this this time earlier what when we have to fire the request after the log i'll just using the get method but within the case of post method here i'm going to send a json file right so i'll use another method that is called as body and within this body i'm going to pass this files object that we have to create now and after it i'll post it right <laughs> okay now we are getting an error because i'm not putting anything in the body that will do now so in order to get in order to send that file within the request i'll create an object for the file and let's say i'll name it as json and in the parameters i'll pass the path of the file so if i right low click over it this is the path and i'll put it here and within java you know either you can have the single front slash or double backslash so i'm changing it to that okay here it is right and we also have to import the java.io in order to use the file class object and within the body now i can pass the object of the file of the json file that i want to send with the request right the file that has my json that it's going to post okay now i'll just print this response using the pretty print method right and now let's see what we get in the response right okay so now i just posted a new student within the application okay okay so we are getting an error here from the student app that email not well formed okay let's go back and see okay 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 here we go here we go so there is a mistake in the email right there was a double uh, dot here so i just removed it now let's try firing this up again and here it is we just got a message that a new student got added right to ensure that again we can fire up the get request right on the 101 student and here it is right a student got just added this is the json that we have sent right in order to create a new student we just posted this request and now it is created from the get we can see that right so this is how we use the post request now one thing here is that you know the approach that we have followed here is we created a json file right <laughs> and posted it and got the student data right our, our task is done we see how it post work but you know this is not the approach that we are going to follow i we are going to build up our post request either by the object oriented ways or using the java collections there are so much advantages uh, over this to that scenario reason being you know in the coming up classes we are going to see that uh, it's not that we we just want to add one student right or we just want to make one entry suppose for the another application also we are going to do entries you know multiple entries suppose i want to add 1000 students so i'm not going to create multiple json files right so there is a better way of doing this again in the in depth in the coming up lectures we are going to see that how we can do that for now our objective was to see that how a post request works how it looks like right so this is how the post request works right now moving forward with the post request 
suppose that the student that I just added, right, I just made some mistake within the name or let's say in the program or in the courses, right, and I want to update it. So how I can do that uh, within the rest short? So again, we have another request called put, which is also known as the update requests, right? So this request is used in order to update any existing record or within the case of student app, any existing student information, right? So in order to do, in order to test it, I'll create a new class. I'll name it as the put request test. Okay, so again, you know, be sure it's going to remain same. Here. All right, we haven't created a new test ng test. A new method. And let's say I'll name it as put request. Here we go. Import the test ng. All right. Now again, I'll create a response class object. Initialize the request with the given. Set the content type. Same old drill. dot json okay also we have to do the starting import of given dot given right this is the, this is the same old thing you know that's why i didn't really emphasize on what i have just said the same old thing that we were doing earlier okay Okay, now again, I can log my request to what I'm updating. We're getting an error here because we didn't really import it. And the response class. And, you know, within the case of post record, we passed a body, right? That has my JSON, right? Now, within the case of this put request again i have to pass a json right which has my updated student information right so within this i will use the same file right and this time like i passed an incorrect email i want to pass the updated email or the correct email right so it, let's say it's let it be this right Okay, so I just saved the file. Now, again, I'll create this file object, right? The updated JSON uh, up, uh, file object. I'll name it as JSON. You will see, you know, the, everything that I did here is the same as the post request, right? But on the back end, what it is, it is doing is it's really updating an existing information right import the file package and use the body method to pass the new json put the file object right and this time earlier we used the post method now i use the put method right but now one thing that you must uh, notice that how it is going to know that uh, which student information it's like actually updating so again, you have to give a path here, right? So the student ID is my path, right? Put it in the quotes. So this is the student that I want to update, right? With a new JSON. And the request, you know, almost looks identical to the post request, but this time we are updating an existing record. That's why I'm using the put method. And within that, you have to provide the path 
or I can say the ID of the student that you want to update. In our case, it's 101. So again, I'll just print this response. All right. And let's see if the student get updated or not. So I'll just fire this up. And I got a message student updated. Let's cross check it again. So I can go to the get request and again fire this up. So 101 is a student. And the email got updated. Right. And how we did it using the put request. Right. Simple as that. Syntax and you know create a creating of the post put request is same as the post request, right? Only the change is that you use the put method and the URL changes. Right? You have to pass the ID also, which you are updating within the URL. Right. Okay. So now we are left with the last request, which is the delete request, which is, you know, as obvious as its name, it is used to delete some record that is present within the database or in the application. Right. <clears throat> so let's see how it works. So again, I'll create a new class. I'll name it as delete request test. All right. And again, you know, the, the things are going to remain same. I'll use the same URLs. Before that, I'll create the test with the annotation. Forty test ng. Okay, first create the method public void. Let's say delete request. Now import the test ng. These are the URLs. Right. And again, I'll create a response class object. Initialize with the given method. Set the content type. And to JSON. And also I want to log it. Everything will be logged. And at last I'll fire up my delete request. Right. So I'll use the method called as delete. Also you have to import the response class and this static import of given. Okay. So, you know, again, the everything, the basic structure remains same, like the same thing that we are doing here, right? The only thing is that here, the request that we are firing up is the delete. That's why the method is delete. Now, again, the same thing arises here that on which record I'm firing up this delete request. So within the degree, uh, delete method, you have to, as a parameter, you have to pass the path or the ID of the student that you want to delete. So in our case, I just created a new student um, at the ID 101. I'm trying to delete that, right? So let's try firing this command up and see if the students get deleted or not. Okay, so the test is passed as you can see. And to cross check it, Again, I'll fire up the get request on this ID and this time it should not display it, right? So we got an error and it's saying it's not found because we just deleted it using the delete request, right? So it's really simple, right? It's really easy to understand all of these, right? And with the uh, passage of time, you know, <clears throat> when we practically use it, you know, with, with the more examples, you, you, you'll uh, know about it more right but this is just about the basic of this crud operations how it, is, it works these are really useful because every request you know that we are going to uh, fire we are going to see you know within this session will be uh, around these crud operations right so this is the git 
post, put and delete. Okay. In the next class, what we are going to talk about is that how we can create the post request in more dynamic ways. Right? Okay. Thank you.